I remember that I applied for a Canadian visa. I had all the papers, all the documents. I had government backing. They kept my passport for three months and they, he came out and denied. Applied for UK visa. It was there for 15 days. Came out, what? Denied. Applied for Schengen, Germany. I've forgotten how long it was there. Came out, denied. Meanwhile, I used to see myself preaching in Europe. After the third one came out, denied, I said, I will not apply again. Anyhow, God wants to take me to Europe if it's by flight, spiritual transport. Um, do you know that there's an appointed time element to destiny? So I forgot about when the appointed time came a pastor from London said he wanted me to preach for him. And he's a big pastor. So I applied again and I I made so many mistakes in the application. The one that was perfect they denied me. The one that was so many mistakes. I, I knew that there was no... Oh. They sent me an email that it was available. I went to Lagos and when I opened it, the past day visa was there. I entered into London just for four days. Entered today the meeting is tomorrow. I prayed for 12 hours in my hotel room. The place was stiff. The atmosphere was stiff. I couldn't penetrate. And if I enter into the administration that way, zero. I will not even be able to pick up my utterance. I was in, the, in prayers for 12 hours. Then the atmosphere opened. You know where I learned how to pray long is Makod. So I realized that the hardness of Makoti was the best training that you could receive just in case you have an international scope of ministry. How many of you? I know. Okay. You can pray. But you see, it's what I learned from the Lord that I taught you. I broke that atmosphere in 12 hours. It was after that that I now went to wear my suit. When I came my eyes were red with the Holy Ghost. And you know the way London is. Let's say we are renting this place. It's hours. You pay per hour. So if you move in the Holy Ghost and you add two hours, when you see the bill, you will know that maybe it's not the Holy Ghost that even moved. So there was a limited time to preach and to deliver. If you have any content limited time so that will not encroach into beyond the time that the facility was secured. The first thing I noticed was when I was coming to enter into the hall and meanwhile it was cold. It's March. Cold. I saw a long line outside. I said, who are those people? I said, those are the people that are begging to enter the hall. I said, begging? Why are they begging? I said, ah, all the seats are already booked. So this one just came by faith. If there's a seat for them to... You need to sit. I think fear came up on my heart. These were the ones begging yet. This one, this line. You know why they were there? Most of them had listened to our messages online. I didn't know that. And the hand of God. You see, when the day of destiny comes... It will justify the entire process of the trial of your faith. It was the messages I preached on that platform. Four messages. That triggered our penetration of Europe. 
people that were possessed of devils, the demons cried out and came out of them. It was a raw African gospel that I went with. I didn't change it. What the way? Oh, I was even more terrible. Raw gospel. Ah, one man, one man was now asking, where did where did you guys get this wild ox from? <laughs> you know where it's called? Makodi. The circumstances, the situations were the best training grounds for any man of faith. I spent only four days in that place. Came back, and the moment we came back, the gates were shut for COVID, and that's how I came here and preached for 80 days. The 80-day preaching was what exploded us to the whole world. The whole world. And we have been from nation to nation to nation. You see, the season of manifestation, may you not enter into it if you don't have stamina. If we are to put you on this pulpit for the next 45 days, can you, will you still have what to say? Then you will now know why the process is slow, so that you can get gain capacity. If we are here for two years, I will have what to say for two years. Not just what to say, the word of the Lord for two years. Because the level of depth that the circumstances had to challenge required is what I'm standing on now. Are you with me? You are doing yourself a favor believing in God. I was, I was, you know, I didn't know the Uber that, you know, this Uber. The Uber that they used to carry me was, I went there in 2020, was 2020 Mercedes-Benz 500 series. I've never entered that car before. The, the seat even generates heat. You know, it's, it generates heat and you're warm. I say, Jesus Christ. Is it the gospel that brought me here? <laughs> I was in the heart of Hilton. Hilton Hotel, Central London. That is some of the most costliest hotel on earth. Or in this whole world. That's where they put me. The day of manifestation, if you are not prepared for it, you will look at the wrong thing. Central London, they will charge you 10 pounds because you drove into Central London. You will, be, they will, you will be charged because you drove there. Think about how costly the hotel in that place is. I... I I did not switch on the, the television till I left because of the burden on my heart. I did not adjust to the large life. I said, okay, snap myself and say, we are living the life. We sent somebody, our union, those days in the, in the service, we sent a union member to go to Abuja to fight for us. He, he booked Nikon and snapped his, himself and put on Facebook, living the life, living the life. Union to go and fight. I couldn't switch on the television. All the times I've gone on mission, I've not been able to switch on the television because of the burden that I carried. Switch on television. I don't know what channels play on this station. Because the moment I enter there, take my bath, I fall on my knees. I can sleep on my knees. Because I don't have the utterance to pour out what is on my heart. And sometimes I don't even have what to pray for. Just asking God for mercy. For mercy. For three hours. I'm asking him for mercy. But when we go out the next day, people's eyes will see. I have seen the fulfillment of what God told me. He spoke about this airport. That this airport was going to start functioning at the time that revival will begin. He told me that. And you have heard me say it time without number. Nothing will convince me that this is not the time for revival. Nothing. I 
I went to preach in Malawi. When I saw the poverty day, I refused to collect prophet offering from them. Instead, I gave them, what did I give them? I gave them, it was a congregation of about 1,000, 2,000, like that, 2,000. All of their money, if you put it together, me, I gave $200. Huh? It was more than the money of the whole congregation put together. That $200 was more than all. Well, do you understand what I'm talking about? Their money has no value. So when I saw their poverty, I was, I finished preaching and I sat down. Then they brought one, one lady to me. They say, the lady, they caught her attempting to commit suicide. I said, okay. Why do you want to commit suicide? They say, someone st stole an amount of money that they gave her from her house. I said, how much is the money that they, they said? I said, convert it to the dollars. Then it was how many dollars? $200. So I took $200 and gave her and begged her, don't kill yourself again. Just go and replace. That's the level of poverty. That somebody wants to hang herself because of $200. It was in Malawi while I was preaching. I finished preaching, went back home and slept and had a dream. That's when the angel of the Lord came to me and said, you have been appointed. This is 2009. Oh. Are you there? You have been appointed to be one of the fathers of the African revival. I heard it. So I woke up. I wrote it down. So there's going to be a revival in Africa and I was chosen to one of the people that will around this kingdom. Are you with me? Because I know that I don't have their money, so I changed my own money to dollars. But I found out that I used those dollars to give all of them as a seed. And I came back empty. But I was happy. I was happy because God spoke to me. And he said, I have made you one of the fathers of the African revival. 2009. In 2023. Are you there? I went to an African country close to that one. And they recognized me in the language of what was told me in 2009. Now this one you are seeing is not a preacher. This is a father of the current revival that God is tearing up in Africa. I was told that, the angel told me that in 2009. Are you there? We, we are revivalists. Revival will come from this land. And that's why we are rugged. Huh? You see the training is rugged. Something will come from this land that will bring healing to the nations. As I speak to you, the, uh, our people in, uh, in the United Kingdom, in London, in Cardiff, in Glasgow, they pray 10 hours like us. In Lagos, in, in Accra, Ghana, in South Africa, in, in the United States of don't worry, in this IEC, what we'll do is we'll allow foreign people lead prayer so that you will know that this spirit is a plague that has caught up with many people. When God is raising you to become a leader in his house, <laughs> Satan will come to mock you through circumstances. He will mock you through your poverty. Mock you through the things that are resisting you. Will you believe God? Will you believe God? Will you believe God? So I challenge you to believe Him. I've seen a little of the fulfillments. And we are still young. It means that there are victories for the kingdom that we are going to still secure. And we will not slack. We will not be weary. God will use your life to talk to your family members. Yeah. On our family WhatsApp, you know, I'm I'm the fifth born, so I'm I'm not. They are I have elders, so our elders now say, "You people stop calling this man by his name from today." 
call him apostle. I hope you know the most difficult thing is for your family members to believe in you. They say, don't address him by his name again. We, are, we, are, we have seen that the God is with this man. Even though they honor me in our midst, I don't exalt myself. I'm still... It's better for people to exalt you. You try to sit on the ground. <laughs> Let the people say, oh. Someone tried to fight me some time ago on social media and they ripped the person off. Straight. The people that ripped him off, I don't know them. But they said, this is not the kind of man you will raise your voice against. You, you are, you, we don't know your God. This is your story. This is your story. This is your story. They excavated. You know, Facebook is like Atlantic Ocean. They can dredge and bring strange things out. Kai! Tiago Korama Santo. Say, no, not this time. Leave this one. God will raise people that will fight for you. And you will hold your peace. From the ages back. That is why your name is forevermore. You've been faithful, Lord. You've been faithful, Lord. From the ages back, that is why your name. That is why your name is forever. You've been faithful, Lord. That is why your name. Oh, Lord.